16, so I think he's very familiar with that. Mm -hmm. You know, the Tarakion, uh, again, you know, is one on both sides. So, uh, Zach, at this point in the tournament, probably very familiar with the mirror matches. And I think the other thing that's uh, pretty cool about this one, I don't know if we've seen yet on stream, is the Metagross versus Kangaskhan Mega matchup. You know, Metagross does get faster than after it Mega evolves, so you'd think that'll be advantage Metagross, so it'll be interesting to see how this one plays out. Sort of like the Kangaskhan Mawile matchup light. Kind yeah. Of. So we do go right into game. Michael on the top of your screen is going to lead with Kangaskhan and Suicune up against Zach's Metagross and Landorus Therian form. So the Kangaskhan Metagross matchup right away on the front. Of course, Zach gets a little bit of advantage using that Intimidate onto Kangaskhan. Every, anytime you can get an Intimidate on Kangaskhan is good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Kangaskhan likely to not stick around too long with that Intimidate on it. Uh, it is worth noting, as far as that metagross Kangaskhan matchup, too, you know, Kangaskhan is most likely going to want to be sucker punching Metagross, which it's not weak to. It's one of the changes with a Generation 6, and part of why it's not as strong as it used to be. So uh, there's threat both ways there, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Kangaskhan going to go ahead and Mega Evolve right away. Uh, you know, a very familiar sight to people who have been watching uh, these Pokemon streams since last year. Metagross also Mega Evolving, Pe very familiar to people who were watching yesterday. I've seen a lot of Mega Metagross. Kangaskhan going right for the fake out onto Metagross, trying to get the flinch. Mega Metagross, a huge offensive pre uh, threat, but of course, now that it has been flinched, it won't be able to deal any damage this turn. Landorus goes for the superpower onto Kangaskhan. Really big hit there, gets the one hit KO with a critical hit. Kangaskhan's going to fall, and Superpower, one of those great moves that Landorus has, part of why it's so popular here at this tournament. While Suicune is going to be able to get the Tailwind off, at least. So Tailwind behind the team gets the speed boost, but you never want to lose your Mega in one hit. Yeah, that's a really tough break for Michael there. Like, I don't know if the crit mattered or not, but uh, certainly <laughs> absorbing the Earthquake there is a pretty dangerous play. Mm -hmm. I think it was smart. You know, he used the fake out Tailwind there to try to avoid the... Uh, Substitute. It was kind of just hoping that Zach would be afraid to leave Landorus out there in the face of Suicune, but uh, unfortunately for him, that's not how it worked out there. Zach read that play very well. He got a free knockout for a nothing there, and certainly a knockout on the most important Pokemon on Michael's team. I think one of the issues when you're playing with a team that's more defensive, like Michael's, is that it's really important not to lose your attackers too quickly because these other you know, support Pokemon that are kind of just you know, keeping the team tied together, uh, they're not nearly as efficient at knocking things to the side out. So if you lose your attackers too early, it's very tough to catch up just because you don't have that much offensive pressure. So yeah. Michael's really going to have to buckle down here and try to make this a long game where he can wear down Zach's Pokemon because that was exactly the wrong Pokemon to lose early if he was going to try to take this one. That being said, Michael gets the Aegislash out, which can be very threatening to Zach's team here. Uh, that ghost typing being very strong against Metagross as well as the Jellicent that just switched in. Zen Headbutt coming out from Mega Metagross, just going straight for the attack. Uh, does deal a little bit less than 50%. Suicune did not get the burn it was hoping for. Shadow Ball coming out from Aegislash Slash onto the Jellicent slot. Deals so much damage to Jellicent before it can even uh, make a move. Yeah, a nice play there uh, on Michael's end. You know, he, he uh, probably expected, a, I guess he definitely expected a switch there, not scalding mm -hmm. into uh, Landorus, which was Zach was expecting there, instead throwing at that Shadow Ball, doing big damage. Yeah. Uh, very good play in his end, and that's what he's going to have to do here. You know, he's not going to be able to probably get any one-hit KOs in this game, but mm -hmm. if he can just keep winning damage trades, uh, he can come out ahead in this one. Uh, the big timer on Michael's side, though, is he's going to have to try to take a knockout, probably at least one before Tailwind ends here, because mm -hmm. once he loses that speed advantage, it's going to be really tough for him here. Uh, likely going to see Metagross protecting here, trying to stall off that Tailwind. Yeah, and we are going to see Jellicent switch out for Thunduras. If you want to stall out Trick Room, spreading paralysis is a really easy way to do it. Scald from Suicune into the Protect, Shadow Ball from Aegislash into the Thunduras. So the switch out from Jellicent into Thunduras, more free damage for Michael. Uh, so Michael's getting a lot of free damage off while he's getting has this Tailwind up, but crucially, like you mentioned, he's not getting KOs. Yeah, bold play to stay in uh, Blade Form by Aegislash. Mm -hmm. Obviously the right play, he gets a bunch more damage, keeps whittling down Zack's team, but uh, <laughs> I, I was not expecting it to be willing to do that with, uh, I, I, I don't know, I, mean, I guess it was actually pretty Up safe. Against Metagross yeah. and Jellicent? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I guess he, if he's assuming that Metagross only has, uh, you know, a steel move and a psychic move, I guess it was relatively safe, but, uh, geez, pretty daring. Yeah, Suicune going to protect itself right away. Needs to stay healthy so he can get another Tailwind off. Swagger from Thunderous, avoided by Aegislash. Zen Headbutt into the Protect. Another Shadow Ball coming out from Aegislash. Aegislash does not need to hide behind its shield at all. Doesn't pick up the K on Thunderous. Thunderous surviving with just a little bit of HP. Will have enough time to be able to try and get another Swagger out there. Maybe a, a, per, a, a Thunder Wave. But Tailwind Peter's out, so now... Zach needs to take control of this game while he has the speed advantage. Yeah, I think 
that's a tough spot because you know Suicune protecting the turn before Tailwind now. I mean, do you expect it just to go for the Tailwind here, uh, which would open itself up to a double target? I, I think Zach's likely just going to want to punish any attempt to get that uh, uh, Tailwind up. Uh, he would have been in a much better position obviously Swagger and hit. Uh, Aegis Slash maybe the Pokemon in the game that's weakest to Swagger just because uh, when it's in that blade form, it just takes tons of confusion damage. But yeah. uh, Michael wisely going for the switch here, knowing that uh, Zach will likely focus on this target, though. Uh, he's going to take a bunch of damage for it. Yeah, he's going to take a bunch of damage on his Terrakion, too, which is a Pokemon you try not to, to deal that much damage. But Terrakion avoids the Zen Headbutt. Thunderbolt coming out again onto that slot. That would have been a huge play if Zack had managed to hit that Zen Headbutt. Shadow Ball, though, from Aegislash. Aegislash just staying in its blade form, going to be able to get the pick up the KO onto uh, Mega Metagross. And, uh, you know, unlucky break there from Zack. Good call. Uh, I mean, you had to make that call. Uh, to either double target the Suicune or hit whatever came in on the switch, but just unfortunately that uh, that accuracy not quite there. Yeah, it's a tough break for him for sure. He was just that close. You know, if he'd gotten that Zen headbutt off, this game would have almost been over. But instead, he's still in a pretty tricky position here. He's also really got to be careful with that Aegis Slash. Uh, so far, it's looked like defense isn't the first thing in its mind, mm -hmm. but he does have the threat of that wide guard there if he yep. tries to Earthquake, and there it is. Wide guard into a predicted Earthquake. Thunderous going for the Swagger again onto Aegis Slash, trying to make sure that Aegis Slash can't uh, be as effective as it wants to be. Of course, Lander is mostly effective uh, with those spread moves, but goes for the superpower onto Terrakion, predicting the wide guard. Will it pick up the KO? Yes, it does. So the superpower again on that Landorus will be able to pick up another KO and really good play from Zach, not falling into the trap of trying to go for the double KO with Earthquake. Yeah, poised play by Zach there. I mean, you know that on a team like this with as many uh, problems as it would look like it has against uh, ground type attacks on paper, you know, there's three weaknesses to ground with Arcanine, Aegis Slash and Terrakion. It's very likely you're going to see that wide guard there. So wisely, he doesn't go for it. Uh, takes the safe knockout there and uh, gets his lead back. Uh, also important because with Aegis Slash not having a Pokemon he can switch out to, it has to deal with that confusion now, which is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, Suicune also has to worry about either getting Thunderbolted, which it's really not going to like, or getting Swaggered itself as another special attacker. So right. uh, complicated position here for Michael. He'd really like to get rid of Thunderous and then prevent Landers from switching moves, as we did see it was choiced in the top 16 set that Zach mm -hmm. played. But uh, he really needs to get a knockout now to even things out because uh, this was a game where I think it was very important for one side to get down to two Pokemon first so mm -hmm. that uh, both switching moves and not being able to switch out a Swagger would stop being a factor. Suicune protects while Zack protects his Landorus by switching it out for Jellicent. Thunderbolt into the Aegis Slash, still in blade form. Guz deals so much damage, well over 50% because of his paper-thin de defenses. Shadow Ball goes through the confusion, though, is going to target the Thunderous. Thunderous goes down. So Jellicent and Landorus, the final two for Zack, up against Suicune and Aegis Slash. And, uh, Really tight game here. Yeah, now it's going to be very close. Uh, if Suicune, if it gets stuck with Jealous in here, isn't going to be able to do basically anything. Mm -hmm. But Aegislash can easily take care of it if it gets the chance. So it's going to be a matter, I think, of which uh, Pokemon goes down first between the two ghosts here. Mm -hmm. uh, Lander is obviously going to be in a tough spot. It uh, does have to worry about that wide guard, but if Aegislash is wide guarding, it's not attacking. So it allows him to at least get something done. Mm -hmm. But Earthquake here is not really going to be a viable option with Jellicent also on the right. field, so it's probably going to come down to, you know, just if he wants to drop the rock slides or if he wants to just do kind of uh, piddly damage with U-turn or superpower. Uh, Landris really not the best last Pokemon Zach could have here, so mm -hmm. the advantage may almost be on the side of Michael here, even though it uh, seemed like he'd been behind all game. Yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see. And of course, you know, Suicune and Jellicent sort of up against each other aren't going to be doing a lot to each other to begin with. Wide Guard will come through for Aegislash. Aegislash gets that off through the confusion. Uh, not getting enough, but the Rock Slide protected from by that Wide Guard. Tailwind for Suicune. Just trying to get the speed advantage now uh, with that Landorus out on the field. Jellicent will use Scald onto that uh, onto the Aegis Slash. We'll be able to pick up that KO, though. So here we have the, the Ghost going down for Michael first. Yeah, and, and because of that, I think Zach will most likely mm -hmm. take this game. You know, a Jellicent, very strong defensive Pokemon. Certainly not going to go down to a single Skull at this point. So <laughs> should be able to heal up and start trying to stall out this game. Yeah. Uh, an excellently played game by both sides. Now, this one was really tight. 
And it could even go down to the timer because, you know, Suicune shouldn't have too much trouble dispatching Lander as here now, but it's quicker because of that tailwind. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was also the most gutsy Aegis Slash I've ever seen. It must have been like, what, <laughs> six turns it stayed out there in Blade yeah. form? It just didn't care. I don't think we ever saw it in Shield form, but Ice Beam will easily pick up the KO with that critical hit. And, you know, four times super effective. On to Landorus. Will faint. Jellicent recovering. Of course, the recover from Zach. if this does go to timer, going to be huge for him. Uh, basically guaranteeing the win if it goes to timer. Yeah, I mean, I think it's very likely we'll go to time, so probably should go over this for the viewers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as, like, the time limit goes, you can see the timer... Uh, Slowly, slowly dropping down there. Uh, what happens at the end of the game is that you know, whoever has more Pokemon remaining wins, which is going to be 1-1 here if it goes to time. Mm -hmm. And then it's whoever has more, you know, I think I believe it's percentage first. Is it? I think, I think it's actually flat health first. But either way, uh, you get to see here, uh, having recovery is a big advantage because it goes by, you know, the amount of health you have remaining. Mm -hmm. So, Zach, what he's going to want to do here is try to get a... Oh. <laughs> yeah. The one way that Zach could potentially lose the time is if he gets frozen by the Ice Beam from Suicune. You know, it's funny because that seems like it's going to be a big problem here, but next turn you're going to find out it's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, to finish the talk, though, I mean, obviously, Zach's going to want to end the game at more health here, so between leftovers and recovery, he's very likely to win that. Uh, the, the freeze seems like it would be a yeah, big problem that's, there. that's game ending, right? But, uh, uh, oops. Oh, oh. <laughs> the scald coming out from Suicune, that hot water thawing out the Jellicent. <laughs> As Jellicent goes for the scald again, uh, both of them probably hoping for a burn, at least, just to help get the damage down. Uh, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. <laughs> Almost got the game-winning uh, secondary effect there. Yeah, it's just that close. Uh, this game, <laughs> this game still, could still go either way, though. You know, a burn happening at just the right point here could change the damage at the end of the turn and flip the result of the game because of the leftovers on both sides. So mm -hmm. uh, this is still pretty tenuous. So both sides are going to want to be careful here about how they play this. You know, usually when you're in a situation like this, it's an advantage for one side to have fewer turns than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, probably in this case, uh, Michael's going to want to keep things as close as possible until the very end of the game and then you know, try to get them both burned on the same turn at the end so that Recover isn't going to finish him. Uh, but with Will-O-Wisp on Jealous in here, uh, it's very unlikely that Michael's going to be able to pull this one off. He's going to need Will-O-Wisp to miss once or twice, mm -hmm. and then uh, hopefully he gets a Sculpt burn on the last turn, basically. Yeah. So we will we see the win conditions. Might take a little bit to get there. Scald from Suicune onto Jellicent. Uh, of course, Ice Beam has been curse bodied as well, so not being able to do it. will o -Wisp, though, we know that will o -Wisp doesn't like to cooperate. Yep, so I mean, gets that one miss. Uh, that lets him, if he wants to, kill another minute and a half of the clock. Yep. Uh, so at that point, <laughs> uh, it's going to be pretty close. Yep. Um, he may still. Oh, oh, he gets the Ice Beam back. So, <laughs> so he if can he pray. Can, if he can keep getting Ice Beam freezes and then Scalds next turns, <laughs> might be a way out. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's going to be just that close. I mean, Sweetgood at this point, if the game were to end right now, does have more health, but it's unlikely to be able to keep continuing to do that, especially since Jellison is slower, so it gets to recover at the end of the turn after right. the attack. So all Zach has to do is get any damage on Suicune. A burn would win the game, basically, with a recover on the last turn, but uh, he's probably only going to get one more shot at it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, battle time was about three minutes before that move started, so it's going to come down really to the wire if we can actually time it out. So you can see Zach's moving pretty quickly. Uh, so is Michael going for the Scald this turn on to Jellicent, dealing another little pittance of damage. Will it get the burn? Cr gets the crit, but not the burn. Will-O-Wisp will connect, though, on to Suicune, and that's going to be a really tough spot for Michael to come back from. Yeah, that should almost end the game because while well, Jellicent can keep recovering and like getting to 100% and then losing the burned health, mm -hmm. uh, Suicune's going to have to slowly keep losing health here at the end of the turn, so uh, it should be able to catch up now. Uh, tough break there. I was a little bit surprised to see Michael choosing to move so quickly there. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't end up mattering because Will was hit anyway, but had he got another miss, he could have at least uh, drawn it out to... Uh, I guess he would still have needed a Scald Burn the last turn. 30% yeah. chance is better than zero. And Ice Beam curse bodied again. Not going to be able to just keep dealing uh, that Ice Beam damage uh, into a freeze, Jellicent, potentially. Uh, so, Recover coming out from Jellicent. Zach just, you know, we talked about how that Jellicent was Zach's sort of trademark Pokemon, and it's really coming up big. This is why he likes it. <laughs> I'm sure I can guarantee you it's not the first time we've seen Zach in a <laughs> top cut match here stalling out a game with Jellicent, but this is what it's good at. You know, you get to a position where it's only Jellicent left with something at walls, mm -hmm. and it's very good at winning that one on one, even though it doesn't actually get the knockout. You know, yep. it's uh, with, between leftovers, between Recover, and will is very good at winning on time against Pokemon that can't do enough damage to it. Yeah. So, a Zach, very experienced Jellicent player. He knows how to get in situations where he can close up the game like that decision. Yeah. So, you're getting those six minutes to start thinking ahead, like, okay, you know, what do I want to do? Kind of recollect yourself a little bit. I think that's valuable. So, hopefully both those players you know, took some of that time to just kind of figure out what they want to do next because 
uh, being ready for the beginning of this game is going to be really important. And the beginning of this game has started. Suikun and Kangaskhan on Michael's side up against Thunderous and that Jellicent that saved the day for Zach on his side. Uh, interesting leads, both of our, our bulky water types are out and Kangaskhan exerting that fake out pressure right away for Michael. Yeah, Michael likely thinking that if he hadn't just given up Kangaskhan mm -hmm. so easily at the beginning of the game, he would have won. So it's not the player who lost, but the player who won make made adjustments there. We see Suikun and Kangaskhan, the yep. same leads as game one for Michael, where Zach making the change here, getting uh, Jellison out here against both uh, Suicune and Kangaskhan, two Pokemon it deals with pretty well. Yeah, uh, Kangaskhan can't do that much to, to Jellison, especially with that Will-O-Wisp. Also, without Mega Evolving, it's not able to, or unless it doesn't Mega Evolve, rather, it can't fake out Jellicent and stop that Will-O-Wisp the way, you know, like, mm -hmm. say, uh, be able to against Wash Rotom. So uh, one of the strengths of Jellicent probably going to come out here. Yeah, and Mega, uh, Mega Kangaskhan is going to appear on the field, so Kangaskhan won't be able to use that Scrappy on uh, onto Jellicent. Going to just go ahead for the return on Thunderous, instantly just trying to take an offensive posture here, dealing a lot of damage. Critical hit, bringing Thunderous down to 26 HP, but it'll heal off a little bit of that with its Citrus Berry, and uh, possibly being able to, a little bit more damage than uh, Zach wanted that Thunderous to take, definitely. Thunderbolt going to electrify Suicune, dealing about 40% there, while Suicune's Ice Beam onto that Thunderous. Will he be able to pick up that KO first turn? Yes, thanks to that critical hit. Suicune is going to be able to get the KO with that Ice Beam. But Will-O-Wisp from Jellicent, that's the trade-off he made. Uh, Will-O-Wisp going to burn Kangaskhan, and now Kangaskhan, not quite useless, but definitely not very useful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, after it fainted turn one last game, like, it's yeah. a step well, it's in the right better. direction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's doing its best. You know, like, it's, it's just a little bit better every game. Let's try it. Yeah, I mean, he did get a knockout this game, too, which I think is uh, pretty important here. Uh, I, I don't know that either side would think that's the optimal turn one, but uh, certainly a much better turn than last game for Michael. Mm -hmm. And we saw a close that game ended up being in spite of that. Yeah. So uh, he's probably pretty pleased uh, compared to that. And Zach, at least, you know, burned Kankis got It's not as good as knocking it out, but it definitely uh, vastly reduces the threat it produces, which mm -hmm. uh, is also very important. Unfortunately for Zach, it's going to be tough for him to stop the Tailwind from going up again. So uh, I would expect to probably see that coming out here soon as uh, Michael has another opportunity to try to get momentum rolling. Yeah, well, Zach's going to just evolve his Metagross. Suicune, hoping that Zack has decided to double target it, uh, going to protect while power up punch from Kangaskhan. Again, Kangaskhan has these tools, will boost its attack a little bit to make that Will-O-Wisp, that burn, less effective. Uh, just trying to get those those two stages of attack boost. Zen Headbutt into the Protect, Will-O-Wisp into the Protect. So free plus two for Kangaskhan, even though it's burned. Yeah, that's... Uh it's a tough spot for Zach now. I guess he was kind of thinking like I was like, oh, you know, Suicune's probably going to try to get the Tailwind up. Like, mm -hmm. I really need to stop that. But you're giving up that free power punch basically negates the burn other than the damage. So uh, now it's kind of a tough spot for Zach again where yeah. he's down a Pokemon. Kangaskhan's losing health, but you know, it's still presenting the normal threat a Kangaskhan would. Uh, can't burn it again, so mm -hmm. you know, it's just going to get stronger from here. And uh, Michael's got control of this game now. Yeah, Suicune switching out for Arcanine. Arcanine making its first appearance of the stream, getting that Intimidate off onto Mega Metagross. Of course, loses that clear body, so will take that attack fall. Uh, and then Jellicent as well, but Jellicent doesn't really mind. Kangaskhan going for a Sucker Punch, but the, the substitute from Metagross is going to make it fail. So Metagross gets its free sub up, while Will-O-Wisp into Arcanine uh, not going to affect it. Of course, the Fire type doesn't mind a little burn. Yeah, nice play by both sides there. Yeah, Zach getting up that big uh, substitute. Probably yep. wish you could do it a turn sooner to have dodged that Intimidate. You know, one of the weaknesses of Mega Metagross, so you don't yeah. have that clear body anymore. But uh, Kangaskhan also wasted turn, and then Arcanine switches in and wastes Jellicent's turn. <laughs> so uh, not too much happening there other than the Intimidate going across and uh, Metagross getting up that sub. Uh, Kangaskhan's health is also slowly ticking down. You know, it's getting close to the point where Metagross hitting it once and the burn damage would uh, be able to finish it off here. So I wouldn't be surprised if Zack starts slow playing this, trying yep. to wear Kangaskhan down. Yep, as you can see, Zack using the Protect and the Substitute. Sucker Punch onto the Jellicent, though. Uh, Michael's not letting uh, Zach just be <laughs> just be defensive, but Cursed Body is going to disable that Sucker Punch for a while. Will-O-Wisp from Arcanine onto Jellicent. So good plays there. Going to deal a lot of damage to Jellicent, actually, thanks to the Sucker Punch and the burn. Scald onto that Arcanine, though. Oh, oh onto Kangaskhan, just dealing a little bit of damage. So Arcanine gets a free, Willow, or free burn onto Jellicent, and Kangaskhan gets the Sucker Punch damage. Avoid having anything too risky happen with this Metagross, try to slit, slowly removing that Kangaskhan because you know, the threat of Sucker Punch was pretty big. Uh, that's gone now, thanks mm -hmm. to Cursed Body, but it came at a cost. Uh, Jellicent is probably relatively safe here. It's unlikely Arcanine has a move that can finish it off, so it'd be able to recover here, but uh, surprisingly we see... A Ooh. Or Metagross going for the Substitute again, while it already has a Substitute up. Does not work. 
uh, as you might expect. Return from Kangaskhan will break the substitute, though. Oh, that's going to be huge if this Arcanine gets the Flamethrower off onto the Mega Metagross slot. We'll deal so much damage. 1 HP! Mega Metagross sticking around for one turn more while Jellicent recovers off a lot of that damage. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, say, well, that was part I of think the, Michael's uh, got a plan. Because <laughs> <laughs> say part of the uh, advantage there of the situation was once Sucker Punch was gone, or I guess if Jelson wasn't attacked, it could easily mm -hmm. heal back up. So the damage on it wasn't as bad as it looked, but uh, very strange to see Zack using Substitute there. I wonder if he forgot that Kangaskhan Sucker Punch was disabled from Cursed Body there. Because or hoped that his Metagross was slower than the Kangaskhan's. Yeah, which... Probably is it? I, I don't know. I just I, yeah. I'm not sure what he was thinking there. I, uh, perhaps a uh, little mental error there. You know, it's uh, been a long tournament so far, and mm -hmm. still kind of early in the morning here. <laughs> so, uh. well, he has enough turns and at least one more game to make up for it. Kangaskhan on Michael's side, switching out for Suicune. Zen headbutt avoided by Arcanine, going for the snarl. Of course, one of the great things about Arcanine is that snarl hits both Pokemon and drops their special attack. Of course, you know Metagross usually not too worried about. It getting a special attack drop, but one HP will get the KO. And of course, Jellicent's Cursed Body will make sure that Snarl is not coming out again for a while at least. And of course, recovering off a lot of that damage. Back up to full HP, the power of Jellicent that we saw last time. Yeah, I mean, you're going to enjoy the Snarl KO there. It's a move <laughs> with almost zero base power, so it's kind of funny whenever it managed to knock Very something rare. out. But, uh, <laughs> uh, tough spot for Zack now, though. I mean, he's healed Jellicent up and avoided, you know, healed off that damage, but uh, this is a really big deficit now. He's got the 2-4 here. Uh, the Zen headbutt miss is a little unfortunate, but it, it wouldn't have knocked out, so it's not like you know, it was that big of a miss. Mm -hmm. uh, Landorus also in trouble now because uh, regardless of what happened last turn, it was going to end up a situation where it was stuck as one of the last two Pokemon here. So with that Choice Scarf, this is one of the big weaknesses. He's going to have to lock into a move very early and deal with four Pokemon, so it's going to be very predictable for the remainder of this game. Yeah, of which I believe we haven't seen the last uh, Pokemon that Michael has, uh, which can be scary if potentially he brought that Thunderous. You can't lock into Earthquake. So has to stick to either Rock Slide or Super Power. Goes for the Rock Slide. That's the safe move uh, into the Protect on Arcanine and deals some damage to Suicune. We saw Zach got some good, good flinches, but doesn't get them this time. In top four, Ice Beam into that Landorus. Not quite enough. Survives with 25 HP, Will-O-Wisp missing on Suicune as well. So it looks like that Landorus is pretty bulky. Yeah, uh, not too surprised to see it survive there. You know, Suicune usually trained pretty defensively so mm -hmm. that it can get those Tailwinds up, you know, support its team with some of its other attacks. But uh, the, the situation keeps getting worse for Zack. It was a nice mm -hmm. read by uh, Michael there. Doesn't take any damage on Arcanine. I guess he wouldn't have much anyway than the Rock Slide, but... Uh, he does get that Ice Beam off, and Zack's health just keeps going down. Yep, but Rock Slide is back out. Where there's a Rock Slide, there's a way. Arcanine flinches. That's one. <laughs> that's two. Suicune flinching, too. Willow is from Jellicent on to Suicune, though. So he is going to get the burn. So even if he's not taking that much damage from the Rock Slide, now the burns are going to start negating that leftovers. Yeah, I feel like I'm in a uh, time warp to last yeah. night. But there you go again. The, uh, <laughs> the flinch is kicking back in. You know, I mean, it's a big deal, though. I mean, Jellicent's still at high enough health where it can start you know, applying some offensive pressure to help out here. So, mm -hmm. you know, Zach just got to do whatever he can here to try to get these Pokemon knocked out. It's worth noting with Kangaskhan in the back, it can't actually hit Jellicent. So, yeah. it would slowly faint to the burn. Though, the timer is starting to get low again. So, it's unlikely that Jellicent would actually be able to take care of it. And we still haven't seen that last Pokemon. Yep. Arcanine going to protect. Doesn't want to take that much damage at all. Another Rock Slide onto Suicune. Going to deal a little bit of damage. Needs the flinch. Another flinch. Zack just getting all of the flinches that he needs. Of course, Scald into the Protect, not going to deal any damage there. But, you know, slowly but surely, Zack and the Slanderous and the power of his Rock Slides are getting him back into this game. Yeah, I mean, the, you got to look at that timer, though. The clock yeah. just keeps tick, tick, ticking. He's got to move it, quickly. Yeah, it's his friend <laughs> last game, but this game it's his enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, he is slowly wearing down this Suicune, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. It's a lot to come back from. You do certainly, or certainly see the power of Choice Scarf Lander, so that fast yep. Rock Slide with that... Uh, outrageously high flinch chance, you can always turn a game around. <laughs> yeah, another rock slide, Arcanine not able to protect, Suicune takes some damage, is it enough to get the KO? Not quite. Snarl from Arcanine though, will be able to deal just a little bit of damage, see, <laughs> just enough. Landorus hangs on with five, that's why you are never <laughs> expecting to see a Snarl KO <laughs> and a flinch on the Suicune. This game is getting crazy, but the Scald comes out, not enough, thanks to the Snarls. Uh, it's two Snarls on that Jellicent, I believe. And Suicune will faint to this burn, though. 
Yeah, I mean, Jelson not doing a whole lot of damage to begin with, <laughs> but uh, is slowly, slowly trying to wear to that arcing on that. Not doing what that it needs. KO is actually pretty important. You know, yeah. The next rock slide from Landorus is easily going to knock it out, so it's not. It seems like it's not that big of a deal, but you know, that's one more turn of protecting Arcanine can do. It has the option of switching out, coming back in, protecting again. So in a game that has a chance of going down to time, uh, surviving is a big deal for Arcanine there. Now, Jellicent definitely going to have to protect now. Uh, Kangaskhan, in spite of his slow health and burn, yep. should be able to take out uh, Landers here and stop those rock slides. So uh, it's possible that we can get down to a 1v1 again, but I think it's going to be a little bit tougher for <laughs> Zach to close this one out than last time. Yeah, we will have to see the... The fake out from Kangaskhan should be able to pick up the Landorus. Only 5 HP. Kangaskhan goes for the Sucker Punch, though, onto Landorus. Doesn't go for fake out. Gets the KO. Uh, really important KO to get there. And now it's one on three. Arcanine Snarl again, trying to deal as much damage to that Jellicent and make sure that Jellicent doesn't have any offensive pressure uh, on this game. Snarl fall uh, deals the damage, special attack fall, and recover from Jellicent. Now at minus three special attack, uh, Jellicent is just going to have to let the burn do its work on Kangaskhan and uh, hope that it it can't handle what's in, it can handle what's in the back. Yeah, I kind of like that recover there. You know, Zach not risking getting sucker punched mm -hmm. and just losing Jellicent prematurely there. Uh, plays it safe. You know, burn will still knock out Kangaskhan this turn. Uh, he's definitely going to get sucker punched now, so you just kind of risk. You know, do I want to take that damage for free to knock out Arcanine now or not? I would mm -hmm. expect that he won't. It does not. Yeah. Sucker punch failing. Arcanine snarl, getting it down to minus four special attack. So Jellicent not dealing any damage whatsoever anymore. Uh, takes a little bit of damage. Cursed body will disable Arcanine snarl. Uh, probably not too worried about that. Uh, recover coming out from Jellicent to heal itself all the way back up before the burn. And of course, Kangaskhan taking the burn damage and it will faint. So we have to see what Michael has in the back, what his last Pokemon is. And he has options. If it's Aegislash, he wins, pretty much. If it's Slenduris, he probably wins. Terrakion might be a little bit closer. And it's Terrakion. <laughs> That's the worst possible Pokemon for Michael to have had in the back right now. Yeah, I mean, he's still relatively safe. Like, basically, what he needs to do here is not miss Rock Slides. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much what it comes down to, right? Uh, Zach's only going to have about three turns left. <laughs> yep, Rock Slide from Terrakion onto Jellicent, going to deal some damage. Hopes for some flinches. Dealing good damage. Arcanine's Flamethrower onto Jellicent. Dealing a lot of damage, actually, now. And Jellicent flinches! <laughs> I mean, it's hard to feel too bad about that <laughs> one, right? Like, the flinches go both ways. I right. Michael's pretty daring here. I mean, he does have a chance to lose the game if he misses a couple rock slides. Mm -hmm. uh, Jellicent knocks out Arcanine, then burns Taraki and starts stalling yeah. out the game. So I'm uh, surprised he didn't wait his 45 seconds there. But uh, with that rock slide hit, it should basically close the game for him. Yep, Tarakian's rock slide again will connect, and that will be game. Handshakes. You know, Zach tried, but Michael pulling it out, getting the one flinch that mattered, not the seven or eight that Zach was <laughs> able to, to scrounge up. So hopefully that doesn't come back to, 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 you know, hurt Zach in the next game. He wasted all of his flinches on game two, <laughs> and he might need them in game three. Uh, Earned 80 championship points already. Mm -hmm. They win this round, they get 20 more, and then they get a shot at getting 20 more in the finals with yeah. you know, 100 for a second and 120 for first. So now those points at the end of the season really matter. I know Zach yeah. just barely missed Worlds last year. I think he was like a spot or two out. So, you know, if he'd gotten those 20 points just last year, he would have been 20. at the big dance. So yeah. he knows exactly how important it is to win here, and he's going to try to avoid it. The fate he suffered last season right now. Yeah, hopefully for him that he thinks that these Jellicent and Metagross leads will be what it takes to do that up against the Kangaskhan and Thunderous from Michael. Of course, Michael, you know, Kangaskhan, we saw it leading a lot last year in the back a lot more this year. But when it's a lead, it just exerts so much pressure instantly. But Jellicent doing a great job of countering that. Michael making the adjustment, though, bringing the Thunderous. Yeah, we've got an interesting matchup here. I mean, Kangaskhan afraid of Jellicent, but Jellicent afraid of Thunder is. So mm -hmm. we've got to get the uh, circle going around here. Uh, the trouble that is that Metagross isn't involved, so I think it's going to be important for Michael not to just cough up a free substitute here, but also dangerous to try to do that in front of a Thunderous and risk getting Thunder waved. Yeah. The Mega Evolution from both Megas on, the, on each people's team. Uh, Mega Metagross for Zack and Mega Kangaskhan for Michael. Right at the start, Metagross going for the Protect. Doesn't want to take a fake out or any return damage. We already saw return can actually break Zack's sub. Uh, Metagross will be protected from that attack. Taunt coming out from Thunderous onto Jellicent. No Will O Wisp, no recover, too. Uh, Taunt, you know, we've seen that Zack doesn't favor an offensive Jellicent, so Taunt really shutting that down. Yeah, I think it's pretty likely that Zack uh, wasn't expecting that taunt. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's a good chance that he was expecting fake out Thunderwave there, having protected uh, Metagross. Right. 
but I can see the way you know, we hadn't seen Tong at this series. It's very possible he didn't know Michael had it at all. Yeah. I think that's one thing that's really great management of a best of three is when you can still pull out something your opponent doesn't know is there in yeah. game three. Especially now, he has great board control because of that. You know, Jellison not very threatening anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it really improves his position for him. It's going to make things tough for uh, Zach to come back from. Yeah, it forces Metagross to switch out in favor of Thunderous, while uh, Kangaskhan switches out from Michael's side as well in favor of that Aegislash. Going to put instant pressure on Jellicent. Instantly pressures Jellicent out of the field in favor of Landorus, who will then get an Intimidate off on both of these special attacking Pokemon. Uh, but Landorus, uh, not a bad matchup against Thunderous and Aegislash to begin with. The Thunder Wave coming out, good switch from Zach. Uh, his own Thunderous immune to the Thunder Wave. Yep. Uh, pretty clever play there, since he had two Thunder Wave immune Pokemon in the back to switch them both in. I know you're probably going to get a switch and a Thunder yeah. Wave there, so he's uh, managed to survive that uh, poor turn one there, and it's in safe position again. Yeah. Both again, of these players playing very cagey, too. We haven't had any damage dealt yet after turn two. And they're both trying to get good position first, and I think that's very important. You know, they, It's a third game. Uh, both sides are playing this pretty conservatively. They don't want to open themselves up to unnecessary risk, so they're just trying to make sure they stay in safe positions and they can keep controlling the game. You know, nobody wants to try to make one of those really bold reads we might have seen on day mm -hmm. one where there's going for the game on turn <laughs> one. Yeah, at this point, you want to try to make sure you're doing this as safely as possible. Speaking of safe, Michael uses wide guard trying to protect his Thunderous from any kind of, uh, uh, of rock slides and itself from earthquakes. Rock slide comes out into the wide guard, taunt onto Zach's uh, Thunderous, but will be able to just go on the offense, Thunderbolt onto Michael's Thunderous, dealing some decent amount of damage, but making sure that there will be no Thunder Waves and no Swaggers. Yeah, I think that was a great play by Michael, even though it looks like he lost on damage there. It's all about keeping control. Now he doesn't have to worry about Swagger coming out on Aegislash. Mm -hmm. He knows that Landorus is locked into Rock Slide, so Aegislash is actually pretty safe here. And it's pretty likely we'll see Thunderous switch out now uh, to something that can help him you know, absorb that Rock Slide fairly easily. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about Thunder Wave. He brings his Mega back in. Mm -hmm. Aegislash can get relatively free damage out here because Thunderbolt and Rock Slide, like Waddle or Hurry, it should be able to trade back and do more damage. So I'm not in a bad position for it now. He also has the option, if he wants to, just try to go on the offense instead, keep blocking the damage from Landris. Can probably win that trade too. So, you know, getting that taunt there was probably worth the damage he took back, especially the mm -hmm. information about Rock Slide, though. I guess at this point, if Zach didn't lock Landris into Rock Slide, I'd be a little bit disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, the, you don't change what works, but you do change your Pokemon when they're locked into a move that can't deal any damage. Uh, out comes Jellicent, another wide guard. Michael just trying to keep his Pokemon safe. A hidden power from Michael's Thunderous, most likely Ice-type, trying to deal damage to that Thunderous. Of course, Jellicent not going to care about that as all, at all. While Zach gets another good damage trade off onto Michael's Thunderous. Pops the Citrus Berry, we'll probably need at least two more of those Thunderbolts. Uh, maybe a Thunderbolt and an Ice Beam should, or a Scald. Uh, but deals some good damage, gets the Citrus Berry out of the way, and basically takes nothing in return. Yeah, excellent read there by Zach. Yeah, he expected the play, but he got there. He figured that Michael would play it exactly how he did, using that wide guard to stop Landorus' damage, using Thunderous to try to remove Landorus. Uh, it makes sense. Landorus is a pretty important Pokemon for Michael to try to get rid of. He wants to get rid of that Intimidate threat, that super power threat against his Kangaskhan, so Kangaskhan mm -hmm. can start doing some more damage. Uh, but he doesn't let that happen. He gets Jellicent back in for free, but now he's not actually in that great a position. Like, he won yeah. the turn, but he gave up board position to do it. He doesn't want to take a Thunderbolt or a Shadow Ball from either of these Pokemon. Uh, Jellicent often doesn't carry Protect. I don't know if he is this time, so uh, he's probably going to need to switch again and kind of make a read because uh, I can almost guarantee you know, one of Thunderbolt or Hidden Power is going to come at that slot, right? So he has Definitely. to switch in the right Pokemon back in. Switches Jellicent out in favor of Landorus. Back out on the field. Needs to hope that Michael did not read that play coming. Thunderbolt from Thunderous. Correct play from Zach. No damage dealt to his, his Landorus while Thunderbolt back from it. Oh, the critical hit! is going to pick up the KO onto Michael's Thunderous while Aegislash going for some damage of its own. Switches into its blade form, uses the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball will connect with the Landorus, so still getting some damage off. About half of its HP drops the special defense. Thunderous' taunt wears off this turn, too. So really good play from Zach. Managed to predict that correctly. Yeah, that's a nice position for him, too. Uh, <laughs> the big thing with the critical hit, I mean, when you get hit that many times, you're starting to build up the likelihood that maybe this is going to happen. But that was just <laughs> the wrong turn for it to happen with yeah. the taunt expiring here, where it makes this turn much more difficult for uh, Michael here, where he doesn't want to get Thunder Wave on Kangaskhan. He doesn't want to get Aegislash Swagger. Like, both these things would vastly hurt his uh, ability to keep uh, pressuring Zack. Mm -hmm. So he's going to make a difficult decision here because, uh, you know, he could just fake out wide guard or something, but he's not going to take any, you're not getting anything from yeah. that, you're just wasting your fake out. So he's going to have to try to make a guess here, probably. Uh, Zach's been making the better reads of, so far this game. So if Michael wants to come back here, he's going to have to figure out what Zach's doing here and try to actually you know, gain something from this turn. 
Well, we'll see what he decided on. Fake out onto Thunderous, dealing good damage there, thanks to Mega <laughs> Mega Kangaskhan's uh, powers there. Earthquake comes out from the Landorus, though, is going to deal so much damage to both the Kangaskhan and the Aegis Lash. Will it pick up the one-shot KO? Yes! The blade form with those paper-thin defenses, not able to survive an Earthquake from Landorus. Good damage dealt to Kangaskhan, too, and that hurts for Michael. Yeah, the Aegis Slash who never uses uh, King Shield was not yeah. quite as strong of a tactic that <laughs> time. I mean, it was it was a tough position to be in if you're uh, Michael there. I mean, maybe it would have been a little bit better to try to bring out Trakin instead, you know, like protect King Shield and then Wide Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, because like I mentioned before, like this, you, is there a si situation there where because you're in blade form and you can't just Wide Guard fake out that you have to give up something, right? There's the Thunder yep. Wave, which would be very bad. The Swagger would be very bad. Or the Earthquake, which was the worst possible thing that could have happened there. Yep. Zach had a pretty easy play, and it paid off there. Yeah, speaking of worst possible things that could happen, Jellicent now switching in against a Terrakian and that uh, Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan now paralyzed, tried to go for the Sucker Punch. But of course, on the switch, there was nothing to Sucker Punch. Rock Slide from Michael, hoping for a little bit of the magic that Zach had earlier. Deals good damage to Thunderous, pops the Citrus Berry. Uh, hoping for a flinch on that Jellicent. Uh, but unfortunately, Trakian probably not going to be able to make uh, the plays that that Zach was uh, before because it's slower than that Thunderous. Yeah, it's a tough spot here. You know, Thunderous not going to get flinch. Uh, interesting decision now on Zach's end if you want to go for the paralysis or the burn on Trakian. Mm -hmm. You know, usually you think, oh, I want to get this burn just so I can you know, wear it down. But uh, paralyzing it might be easier. He doesn't have to worry about the flinches anymore. He can easily just you know, start scalding it down. Also, Cursed Body is going to be a big threat for Michael yeah. here now. There's no Pokemon to switch out to. So if he gets an important move disabled, he's going to have to deal with it. And uh, both these Pokemon can only hurt Jellicent with one move. <laughs> so uh, Cursed Body yeah. could be a huge problem. The Thunder Wave from Zack onto Terrakion, going to paralyze it as well. Kangaskhan is fully paralyzed, not going to be able to do anything at all. Terrakion will get off another Rock Slide, probably pick up the KO on Thunderous, get that off the field, and deal a little bit of damage to Jellicent. But Cursed Body on Rock Slide, you were saying it, the one move that Terrakion can use to damage this Jellicent now no longer has it. And Scald from Jellicent coming out onto Terrakion, dealing a lot of damage there, about 50%. Yeah, and that's uh, going to be really rough here. Now the only way that uh, Zach could do any damage to this gelatins with uh, Sucker Punch from Kangaskhan, mm -hmm. which uh, at the very least, since both Pokemon are paralyzed, <laughs> uh, Jellicent has no option but to attack to try to damage them, but I don't know if it's going yeah. to be enough here. We got Metagross Jellicent coming back Jellicent doesn't have in. to do the attacking. Mega Metagross is back on the field. Yeah, you can only Sucker Punch <laughs> one Pokemon, right? Yeah. So they can probably both just team up to take out, uh, I guess, either of the Pokemon here, really. Just, mm -hmm. uh, there's still Landers in the back with that Intimidate, so a uh, very advantageous position for Zach here. He had just the right Pokemon, and yep. uh, Michael realizing that he doesn't have a great chance of this one. Yeah, uh, no win Gentlemanly gives there. up the match there, and Zach takes it home and makes it to the finals. Yeah, I mean, are we surprised? Zach has been in almost every regional final.